Thank you for tuning in to Tag Church here in Little Rock, Arkansas. We pray that this message will truly be a blessing to you today. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so by visiting us at tagchurch.net. Also, if you have any prayer requests, don't hesitate to send them to the email address on your screen. We would love to partner with you in prayer. Now, I hope you're ready for a word from the Lord today. Let's get right into it, and God bless you. Could you give a warm Little Rock Tag Church welcome to Amanda Crabb. God bless you. Who's thankful for a man of God and a woman of God who will say, Lord, have your liberty. Move in this place, Holy Ghost. Come on, as he's honored us as pastors, I honor your pastors tonight, and you should too. Aren't you thankful? I want to tell you that we have been so looking forward to coming. Yeah, you can be seated for now. And it is an honor to be in Little Rock, Arkansas. We were trying to think of every song that was written about you on our way here. I won't sing them for you. But more than that, I just, I just see the Lord singing over you. That as Little Rock has a lot of hook and lyric and melody to it. It's as if the Lord is just singing over this place. And as I was standing down there, boy, I'm jumping in, aren't I? <laughs> as I was standing down there just watching your sign, Tag Church, and it was as if I just heard the Holy Spirit say, Tag, your it. Tag, your it. Tag, your it. Now, this isn't a game of duck, duck, goose when you get hit and you run around the circle and you sit back down. Tag is a continual state of running. And so it is time for the church of God to begin to run her race in diligence and endurance in the hour that we are living in, not being fearful, not getting tired and weary and saying, God, I can't do this. This is the hour of understanding that if God said it, he will fulfill his word. He will fulfill his promise. And so I just came to prophesy the word of the Lord over Tag Church that might be the place of the Tag Revival. This might be the place, the touch center point for God's glory to come. And people from all around will come and say, I had to just come get a tag. You're in to take it back where they came from. Somebody needs to agree with the word of the Lord tonight. Go ahead and hit your neighbor. Say tag your it. Woo. Tag your it. I want to tell you it's not very often that I walk into a place that feels like home because the atmosphere is cultivated. So I, I cannot promise you that this is going to be quick. I cannot promise you that I will not hold a fire tunnel right up here in this altar. And I cannot promise you that oil won't be dunked all over us before the night's over. But what I can tell you is that God Almighty is already in the room. And if you are willing to receive what has been deposited into me tonight, you will leave encouraged, changed, and forever set in motion for the glory of God. If you'll stand to your feet, we're going to read the word. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Father, for your peace. Thank you, Father, for your worship in this room. Thank you, God, Lord, that lives are already changed and transformed. Thank you for a hungry people in the room to reach out and touch you tonight. Lord, without you, there would be no point in us being here. So, Lord, as I stand as your vessel in this moment, I'm asking for your words to come forth through me into the hearts and the minds of the people. Give us ears to hear and a heart to understand what it is that you're speaking and declaring in this moment. Amen and amen. Woo! I guess I should introduce myself. I'm thankful to have my husband Pastor Aaron in the room tonight. We, this is actually our first 
in a long time assignment of being together. We, uh, not together like that, but together traveling. We have been going a million different directions where we have bought a new piece of property as a church and we've been painting walls and he has already said, I think I know this wall color in this room. We won't ask what it is. We've been more acquainted with wall color than anything in this season. But it was good to travel with him and a spiritual son of ours, Pastor Caleb Curtis, who is an Arkansas boy, by the way, you all. He was excited to come home and travel with his pastors, and we are honored that he came with us to Tag Church. We're going to open the Word of God, the book of Jeremiah. I'm going to read a scripture, and then we're going to jump around and see what the Word of the Lord would say in this hour. Aaron and I have been pastoring for eight years. We've been married for almost 21. I don't look that old, do I? No. And we have four amazing children. One of them is officially an adult, and I'm still not sure where to put that. Um, Ranging from 18 all the way down to six, and God has blessed our lives. And I will tell you tonight that it did not come without being tried. It did not come uh, without sleepless nights and tears, but it came through much prayer, much seeking the Lord, and he has been faithful every step of the way to honor what he has said. And I'm thankful to stand before you tonight as a vessel for his glory. We're going to open the word of God, Jeremiah 1, and today... In the incredible day and the thing that took place, I got to tell you is that I believe that so many uh, wondered if we would ever see this day in our lifetime, right? And I remember a couple of years ago going to D.C. uh, with several of our intercessors and we walked. This is when you could go into the Supreme Court house and we sat on the fountain outside and we anointed our feet and we anointed our hands and we stood before those seats and we declared that righteousness and holiness would fill those seats, that there would be ruling to come forth out of that place that would set this nation in motion. And, and I, I'm i like, you always remember those moments that you called forth heaven from the courts of heaven into the courtroom of our nation. And then I remember the night that Amy Comey Barrett was appointed We were in D.C. with Bishop Kevin and Devin Wallace, and we stood at those steps, and witches came uh, for a show-off right in our faces. We were standing and praying respectfully, and, man, I wanted to call down fire. I wanted to call down fire so bad. And the Lord said, tell them I love them. And I remember the moment that as I'm standing in front of these witches with their signs and their vulgar words coming at us. All I could say in the microphone is, God, I thank you that your love covers, that your love reaches, that your love is greater than anything we could think, ask, or imagine. God, Lord, if they could just experience your love in this moment, this curse would be broken off of their lives. And as I was praying, one just began to weep down her face. And it wasn't long that they all left in solitude with their heads down. I didn't see the transformation take place, but the seed was planted. And so on this day, I am rejoicing Ooh. with a great rejoicing, but yet on the other hand, my heart grieves. Because there's still so much work to do. Yes, there will be homes that will be filled with babies. I believe that. We, we, have, we have said, Lord, we're willing to prepare. But our hearts need to also be prepared to speak the love of God. Even in the face of evil wickedness. Because you never know what seed will take root in this hour. Mm. So on this day of government being set in motion and fulfillment, we're going to read verse 12 to start. As Jeremiah is receiving 
the prophetic call of the Lord. And I don't know about you, when the Lord called me, I argued with him. And I told him all my inadequacies, which he very well knows. And so here we are, and Jeremiah's mouth is touched. And the Lord said, I put my words in your mouth. I've, I have set this day over you, over the nations, and over the kingdoms. And we're going to go down at verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see my, that my word is fulfilled. Somebody go ahead and look at the person beside you and say, every word that has been spoken from the throne room of God, he is watching. Who? He is watching to see what you're doing with the word that's been given to you. He is watching to see that his church is stewarding the prophetic unctions that have come forth out of the prophet's mouth. He is watching and standing at attention to say, my word will be fulfilled. I know the nation looks hopeless, but it's not over until God says it's over. He's just looking for somebody to come into agreement with the word tonight. Say, Lord, I agree. Lord, I agree, I agree, I agree. You can be seated if you can. I, I've heard that you all have been at camp. Your pastor's been at camp. I don't have to tell you that uh, I love an excited church because you all are that. I don't have to worry. I like a talk back to me church, an amen kind of church. So if the word hits you tonight, it's all right to shout. You won't distract me one bit. So as the word of the Lord is coming to the prophet, God asked him, what do you see? And I can find all through scripture when the Lord begins setting into motion something, he wants to partner with you and with I. He wants to partner with humanity. And he asked the prophet, what do you see? Not because God couldn't see what he was going to say, but God wanted to know, are you in tune enough with my word? Word and with my voice that you see what I see. Come on, somebody. When God asks you a question, he's not asking for our intellect. He's not asking for our all-sufficient wisdom. He's saying, are you in alignment, not just agreement? We learned last weekend at our church that you can be in agreement and out of alignment at the same time. And God's saying, I don't want you to just agree and amen me. I want to know that you are in full alignment with what I'm doing in this day and in this hour. So God asked the prophet, what do you see? Now here's the question I have for you tonight. If God walked in this room, what would you say if he said, what do you see? What do you see? How bad is it? Are you going to talk about the destruction, the frustration? Because Jeremiah's work was ahead of him. He was a frustrated prophet all through the years. He prophesied 40 plus years to a stiff-necked people who refused the word of the Lord through him. And the Lord had to know, yes, at the beginning of a thing, I need to know that you are in alignment with what I see. And then, therefore, at the end of a thing, I need to know that you're going to be in alignment with what I see. Because I'm trusting you to be a vessel and carry forth my word, departing uh, from all things that are evil and depositing. See, in deposits, there must be a departure. Somebody needs to understand that when I go to my bank account to make a deposit it has to depart from me and so God is saying you must depart from all things that don't look like me depart from the words of evil wicked doers depart from your own agenda depart from man's words and concern depart from the idea that you're too young that you're a woman depart from the idea that the nation has gone to hell in a handbasket depart from the idea that God cannot raise the standard in this day and in this tower but get ready for a deposit of heaven tonight he said what do you see 
I'm reminded of the prophet and priest Ezekiel in 37 when he was set down in a valley full of dry bones and God asked him can these bones live son of man he was not asking what is your assessment of this agenda he was wondering are you going to speak what you see in the natural or are you going to speak according to heaven's plan and heaven's structure yes it has looked like hell has broke open in a nation but what do you see people of God what words will we speak because the truth of the matter is all of us have a tendency to speak what we see right but in the Bible, it tells us that we must not be so stuck on temporary things that we miss the eternal. It's not in what we see in the natural. It's wonderful when God shows you a visible, tangible sign. It's great. But I can tell you right now, I've been in the season where it looks opposite. Where it looks like it's not going to happen. Where it looks like a Lazarus has been dead for far too long. And that grave is going to stink when it opens up. It looked like 50 years in the making and today would never come to pass. But the Lord that God is standing watch over his word. And he will see that it is fulfilled in the hour that he called it to be fulfilled. He said, I'm waiting on the right alignment. Do you know that the planets aligned today? He said, I will show you wonders in the heavens. Literally, the planets early this morning aligned. It had been set into motion long ago. And as the planets begin to align, the Lord said, I've already aligned this out too to begin to cause you to stand in the gap between the living and the dead. To cause you to not just stand and oppose the evil, but offer my grace and my mercy to those who are lost and those who are wayward. Offer my forgiveness and offer healing to those who are in this room tonight that maybe years ago you found yourself in a position lying on a table having an abortion and maybe you were out of your mind but today the Lord is saying if you allow me I will heal that and you will be my biggest advocate in a day and in an hour. He said I don't want to waste that pain. I don't want to waste it away so get over yourself get over the guilt get over the hurt get over the shame and get under my blood tonight God wants to do a work in this day he said I'm watching who's going to do what my word has already said Paul told Timothy recall the prophetic words spoken over your life now see when we get a word from God we have a duty to steward it we have a duty to walk it out and fulfill it I love when God just came and he just strikes it and it just happens and we don't have to work for it we don't have to wait for it. But there are moments in time that part of the watching of God is saying, can I trust you to bring it out? Because when you receive a prophetic word, it will be tried and it will be tested. The word of the Lord has already been tried and already been tested and already been proven. And yet we spend the majority of our time trying to prove to everybody else that God said it. When in all reality, he's saying, just do it. Walk it out. Do what I fulfilled you to do in this hour and in this day. Uh, don't complain and don't murmur when I set you in a place and I'm doing a work. He says, just as the grass, it will wither and it will fade, this earth will pass away. But my word will be standing when all hell has come and devoured this place. The only thing that will remain is what you have grabbed a hold of eternally and said, Lord, it's by your word that I stand here today. If you've been afflicted, it's his word that brings revival. 
It's what Psalms 119, 107 says. Lord, I've been very, very afflicted. Revive us, O Lord, according to your word. So I don't know who in this room has a word from the Lord tonight that has not came to pass that you have been carrying around and you don't even see the evidence of being impregnated with the word and you thought it had been aborted. You thought the enemy had laid you down and taken the promise of God out of you. But tonight I came to revive and prod and provoke the word of the Lord on the inside of you to remind you that if God said it, you can rest assured that it shall be. So what did Jeremiah see? In verse 11, he said, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me. What do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. I see a branch of an almond tree. Now he goes on, and at times theologians would say that that almond branch is a sign of destruction ahead. But uh, tonight as I was studying this, I was reminded of the story in Numbers 17. Hey, what do you see? He said, I see a branch with an almond tree. Go ahead and say, I'm a branch. He's the vine, I'm the branch, I'm in him, he's in me, and together we will what? Bear much fruit. We will bear much fruit. You are a branch of his planting is what Isaiah 60 says. Isaiah 4 talks about the glorious branch of the Lord. I came to declare a word that you're trying to be a tree when God's just looking for you to be a branch. What is the kingdom of God, the disciples ask. And the Lord said it's like a seed that grows a tree, that produces branches, that provides the fowls of the air to set on. Who wants birds setting on them? Apparently the branch of his planting. Birds release things. Has anybody felt like you've had some birds over your head? Oh, it's just me in Tennessee, right? And as the enemy is releasing and condemnation is coming down and it feels icky and it feels frustrating and the Lord is saying, but listen, are you living? Are you breathing? Are you still producing fruit because you're in my vine? Are you still doing a work? Because truthfully, if you allow it to work for you, that'll become fertilization. So in numbers, we see an argument going down. It was a great rebellion that rose up against Moses and his brother, Aaron. And the leadership rose. There was a rebellion of Korah. The leaders in the community, they did not like what they were experiencing. They didn't think that Moses and Aaron were capable. And listen, they were very quick to tell the people, listen, we know we're not. We know. We don't know why God chose us. Here's the first thing that I can tell you. When haters come knocking at your door and they're telling you all that you are, tell them, I don't understand why God called me here either, but here I am. I get it. But here's what I can tell you. You can't take away what God's given to me. And so in the frustration, we see Kor's rebellion and him and several men, I don't know, what is it, 250 plus were swallowed up by the ground because there comes a point in time that God has enough of the complaining. But right before this, we see another complaint rising up. And all of a sudden, there were like 4,000 and so dead. And they begin to stand between the living and the dead. And God said, I'm getting ready to settle this matter. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. Because you've been trying to fight a battle that you can't prove. You can't. Everybody's calling you haughty. They're calling you prideful. Quit, quit announcing your word and your call to 
everybody who don't appreciate it. There will come a point in time when God says, I'm about to make a divine distinction. I'm about to draw a line in the sand. You won't have to open your mouth and say a word because I'm about to handle some business. Now he said, go bring me a branch. From every one of your father's house were 12 of them. Now, I just wonder if it literally had their, you know, their tribal name on it, if it was some kind of a, you know, Wakanda forever, I don't know. Some kind of a tribal thing that when they were appointed as the tribe, they each had their own stick. Now, this stick, it's dead. It's lifeless. It has no ability to produce fruit. Do you think fruit's going to come out of this? No. If we snap it, you're going to hear it. But there's no moisture in this branch. And I would imagine that as those 12 tribes came and brought their branches in and they laid them before the altar of the Lord, they had to be just like this. Twelve of them. And they said, on the Levite's branch, write Aaron. And I want you to leave them overnight before the tabernacle of testimony, before the witness place. And it says that overnight, bring the rods, write each man's name, and you shall write Aaron's on the name of the Levites. Bring them before the tabernacle of meeting of the testimony where I meet with you. And it shall be that the rod of the man whom I choose will blossom. Thus I will rid myself of the complaints of the children of Israel, which they make against you. So Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and each of their leaders told them about the rod apiece for each leader, according to their father's house, 12 of them. And it came to pass the next day, say a suddenly. Now we all know this story. You would say, Pastor Amanda, why are you talking about this? I have a purpose. Number one, because he said so. And the next day, somebody say the next day. I believe that as we saw today that we are living in a day, number one, we have been anticipating this because there had been a leak, right? There had been a leak. We've been anticipating this day, but no man knew the day nor the hour. But we've been waiting and we've been watching and we've been prayerful. And all of a sudden, when it was released today, there was a rejoicing within the heart of the king, right? The kingdom. The next day, which means a suddenly happened. And not just an amazing suddenly, they were looking for one of the rods to blossom. But not only did it bud, not only did it blossom, but it had produced fruit overnight. Now, somebody needs to understand the significance of this. Because, uh, number one, almond trees are the first fruit that produces in Israel. When it comes harvest time, the first fruit you will see is almonds. It's interesting. So as this almond is budded, it's normally about a two-year process before an almond tree produces any kind of fruit. And yet here we are overnight, it happening like that. You see, I know why that is. Because when Jesus came and he was hungry and he went looking for fruit on the fig tree and there was nothing but a bushy bush, it had leaves on it, but it had no fruit when he went searching for it, another scripture. Scripture says you can look at the tree and know the season that you're in. You can know when summer is near based on the tree that has blossomed. I believe it was prophecy being spoken that heaven is making its way into the earth, even into a deeper realm than what you could think, ask, or even imagine, Moses. The first fruit of my increase is producing on the branch of my planting. And as it stood, 
And Moses heard the word of the Lord, and the Lord said, I want you to put this in the tabernacle of testimony. Now, what was in the Ark of the Covenant? Anybody know? The rod with the almond that budded, a gold bowl full of manna that the Lord sent, and the tablets of stone that had the law of God on it. Now we see that fear entered the camp. These same people that were full of rebellion that went straight to the leader's face and tell them we don't like your leadership. We don't think that you know what you're doing. You're going to lead us astray out here. They were the same people that cried out. Are we going to eat manna for the rest of our life? We miss the leeks and the onions and all that Egypt had to offer. They were the same people that were idolizing and worshiping a golden calf when Moses had been gone for too long, then all of a sudden they fear, oh God, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die when they saw the blossom on the rod of Aaron. And God said, put it in the testimony ark. Now I know that we think about the testimony ark as being supernatural things that only God could do. But I believe that that testimony ark were signs to the people of, I should have killed you when you disobeyed the law. But you're living to tell about it. Look. I should, you should have been dead with all of the others who ate the rotted quail and died. But look at that. That man is here to remind you. You're still here. I should have swallowed you up with Korah's rebellion. You shouldn't even be here having a chance to see this rod blossoming. But put it in the ark of my testimony and let it be a sign. The Lord allowed me to live and breathe today. Now here's what's awesome. The sins of Israel is in this box and above it, right above it is the mercy seat of God and above that is where the blood of sprinkling comes down and I'm telling you one way and sure way to remind the enemy, yes I shouldn't be here but yet here I am. I got a box full of testament that's been tested, that's been tried. He should have killed me when I rebelled. He should have killed me when I decided to get drunk and out of my mind. I shouldn't be here today but I got a testimony I don't need to know where the original ark is because it's right here. I got a testimony. I'm seated under the mercy seat of Christ. I'll tell you something, if you begin to recall the goodness of God over your life, you will never allow the enemy to rob one more second of your day. We got to get out of our pity parties of, oh, God doesn't love me no more. You're alive. There are people who aren't in this room today. Well, does that mean God didn't love them? No. It just means that there's still work for you to do in this day and in this hour. And so what will we do with the word that has been given to us to perform? We're going to keep filling the box up? Have we not sinned? Enough? Do we have? No, yes, we sin and we fall short of the glory of God every day. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about rebelling against the word of commission that has been put upon your life. He said, We're going to use this as a sign. They're the Levites, they're the ones who will assist in everything that I'm about to perform and do. They will be the ones to put their hands in the tabernacle of meeting and do the work that I've labored. And when I got here today, I asked the Lord, why do I have to preach this word here? Why? I do that with God. Why? And as we were here and we were worshiping and when I hit my knees, he said, because this is a house of Levites. Now I'm about to prophesy over the house, and you're going to decide if you're going to get into alignment or not. (laughs) 
Because you see, some of you have been in a very dark, dark, dark place. And you've allowed the enemy to keep you there long enough when in all reality, God was just trying to develop and blossom you in a night season. And I hear the word of the Lord asking, are you going to allow me to push this fruit out of you and through you? Or do we have to circle this thing one more time? Come here. I thank you, Father, for your peace. I thank you, Father, for your peace. I hit the recall button. You thought it was gone. Hey, 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 hey. You thought it was gone. Sharabakose. I call it forth. I call it forth. And I remove that grief. I remove that heavy, heavy, heavy grief, that dark space that has been lurking in your windows at your door. Sharabakose. And I just hear him say, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. <laughs> I will handle what has been mishandled. Peace. Thank you, Father, for your peace. Thank you, Father, for your peace. We all get excited about being a part of the tribe of Judah. We all, I, I want to be too. I want to be a part of all the tribes. <laughs> Just saying. I want to be Zebulun, Lord, send your wealth of the kingdom. But as I was in this room and I've never delivered this word, this is fresh, it's completely new. The Lord said, because I'm getting ready to bud something that's been in the night season. And it's been laid out. I'm sorry for doing this to your sticks. I didn't ask. It's been compared to. I need down there. It's been compared to, it's been rebelled against, it's been lied on, cheated, accused, squeezed out, ridiculed, abandoned. I'm talking about the, this house. And yet it did not stop the word of the Lord. Many of you didn't even know behind the scenes. I don't know what I'm talking about, but many of you didn't even know it because it was handled and was never brought to the pulpit. But behind the scenes, it's been laid about, talked about, accused, ridiculed. They're crazy. Some of these, are you up here? You feel wasted away and you wonder, is the night season going to produce any fruit in my life? Is there going to be anything that God would shuffle through the rubble of my life in every word and every hurt and cause me to stand up? Could he trust me to tag? You're it. If God said it's your hour. Who could say, okay? Who could be instant in season and out? Who could produce fruit when you haven't had years of theology school handed to you? Because I'm prophesying now because as the word is coming forth, the Lord's going to watch who can perform it. Now you study, honey, to show yourself approved. Come on up here, baby girl, in the, in the braids. I see you. Come here. 
As the word of the Lord is coming forth, it is as if I see the Lord extending a scepter and a branch to you, saying, can I trust you to even put your name on the rod that's about to explode and about to bud over this region and over this area and not just the state of Arkansas but around the world? Can I trust you? I know he can trust the leadership. I know he can trust the house. But I'm talking about you individually because he's not just raising a Levite out of the past. He's raising Levites and I'm going to tell you what that is in just a moment before I finish and we're going to prophesy and pray over you. But first, what do you see? Can you see the amen when it's just a dead, dried up stick? Are you ready to be free forever? I'm talking about not even desiring what you left. I don't know you. But I see the word of the Lord literally coming and continually severing and saying, you you say, what if it came back? Because of the abuse. Ah. And I see the desire to be filled. Ooh, and the enemy has so used that empty place. (laughs) You ready to be so filled up that the word of the Lord is watched? Do you know that you are the apple of his eye? He does not slumber and he does not sleep. Uh, Now I'm going to lift you up and encourage you. Because everybody else may have walked away doesn't mean he is too. (laughs) I see. I see. You ready to release the shame? Okay. Okay. You ready to see the word of the Lord performed in your life? I pray you're tired. Well, let him revitalize you. Let him renew you. Let him restore you. I hear the Lord say it's a fresh start. It's a fresh start. It's a fresh start. Be filled. Receive it all. Be filled to the uttermost. Come on, he's performing and he's ready to partner with you to do his work in this hour. Come on. Yes, there are things to be refined, but we're not worrying about that. You ready to see the fruit? (laughs) Receive it. Intercessor, come pray with her. David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in tents with wickedness. Levites not only put their hands to the holy things of the temple and the tabernacle of God, they led worship, they did the musicianship. 
They were also the gatekeepers. <laughs> they opened the gates and they closed the gates. They were the watchmen on the wall, crying aloud and sparing. They were the ones who were willing to make sure that the transport was all complete when the tabernacle was moved. When God said move, they willingly helped carry the move of God. You ready for some fruit, aren't you? You've seen some in the past. Somehow, the enemy's lied to you in this season. Thought he was going to steal from you in this season. <laughs> there have been many days of defeat and discouragement. But you have never said, I quit. You wanted to. Lord said, I've never heard him say, I quit. Stand up, man of God. I speak a fresh wind to your soul. I speak a fresh word to the core of your being. I thank God that you are surrounded by heaven's authority. You are surrounded by the host of glory. And it doesn't matter what the naysayers say. It doesn't matter how many times they question why you are here and why you would stand how you stand. God said, all that I'm requiring of you is to be diligent in the house house of God and I will see the fulfillment of my word over your life I even see some things of the past coming into alignment <laughs> that have been lost oh see your arrows are still intact, sir. Mm. <laughs> I speak release. Pastor Aaron, if you'll come and lay your hands on him. I speak the fresh wind of God over your mouth. See, oftentimes when you receive the word of the Lord, a contrary wind rears its head very quickly. I don't know this man, but I see the contrary wind that has risen. <laughs> it has tried to push him back to the starting point over and over and over and over. Because when God gives the word, we're going to the other side, sir. He means it. Shut up, he means it. He means it. And it doesn't matter who don't like it. Shh. The Levites were willing to be in the house at any point. The leader said, get to the temple, get to the house. Anytime God said it's time. Nights like tonight, revival. House of Levites carrying the presence well. <laughs> Can God trust you with the budded rod? Because here's what I prophesied there will be people who will say, Where did this come from? Who did they rub shoulders with to get this? And the Holy Ghost is going to just speak on your behalf and say, they've been with me. They've carried my presence well. They have established my place of glory. They have decided to host me at all costs. They are willing to guard the gates, to open them when I say open, and to shut what I say shut. 
Stand up, sir. Pastor Dwayne. Aaron, as a symbol. He didn't even know what I was preaching tonight. Come here, Aaron. I hear the word of the Lord saying, as I'm raising a house of Levites, the doorkeepers, the Levites, those who are diligent in the things of God, those who are saying, yes, I will carry the presence. I will not mishandle it. I'll not try to put it on a cute cart and roll it on wheels. I'll carry it until I get weary. I'll carry it until my back hurts. I'll carry it until you renew my strength. I'll carry it at all costs until... We see the fulfillment of the plan of God in this day and in this hour. There's a new, a new, a new assignment of the priesthood that is rising up because we have a high priest who is seated, who is a first fruit of all brethren who have been willing to die, who have been willing to be sacrificed, who have been willing to lay their life down at all costs. Shodarabahiyase. I sense there is about to be, and I don't do this. My husband and my spiritual son, they know me. And I got to tell you something, as a prophet of God, it's very seldom that I go into a house that God didn't send me into course correct. God said, you're not here to correct anything. You're just here to speak the direction of what they already know. So even in weariness, even in hell's assignment, even when other doorkeepers have walked away and left their position. (laughs) Here's the awesome thing about the Levites. They were the only tribe. Listen to me. Listen to me loud. Listen. They were the only tribe that refused to bow to the idol cow. They were the only ones who refused to bow to the golden calf. And I'm telling you, in a day and in an hour, when the agenda is going to be bow, 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 God has said, I found a house that refuses to bow. I found a house that's willing to carry it well. And I speak the blossoming of the bud. And here's what I can tell you There's only a small remnant of people in the earth I'm telling you, we see it We travel, there's only a small remnant Who are willing to lay it all down We call it doubling down in our house It's all in Speak the word of the Lord. Oh, it's been tested, it's been tried. It's been tested, it's been tried. She likes that side of the room. I'm coming. Don't get distracted. Because that's been the biggest struggle of your life. The enemy loves to send distractions. He loves it. He loves it for all of us. But it's as if I can hear you saying... When one thing goes wrong and you get it right and you get it fixed and it starts moving in the right direction, something else happens. But 
I speak exactly what your word says on your shirt. That you will not get distracted. And not only that, it will not be distorted in this season. I speak a fresh wind. I speak a fresh wind of God. I speak the peace of God. I speak revival fire. That as the Lord, listen, you tend to it. You carry it. But I'm telling you, it's the Lord who is standing watch over his word. Yeah. Even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. He'll never stop, he'll never stop working. Never stop, he'll never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. He'll never stop, he'll never stop working. when I spoke that tag word it's funny because your name's Chase <laughs> and as I see the name Chase I see the Lord say I chasten those that I love some rebukes in your day. The Lord said, because my love for you is passionate and my work for you is great. And as I speak this over you tonight, this tag chase, you're it. I just prophesy that you're getting ready to chase after his presence in ways that you did not know possible, that the fire of God is coming and igniting your house that you won't be able to flip that channel on. You will not be able to have a conversation. All you're going to be able to do is pray in the Holy Ghost and say, if I don't get to his presence, ah, I don't know that I'll survive it. I don't know that I'll make it. I got to get to him, so I'm going to chase. I'm going to chase. I speak the infilling of fresh fire. Come on, let it go. Let it go. 
Let the fresh infilling of the fire of God Holy Ghost of God and fill him with the glory, 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 with the glory. As the Lord is pouring out a baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Lord's changing his talk. He's changing his language. He's changing. It was about 19 years ago the Lord radically transformed my life. I was sexually abused as a child in her teenage years and did everything to try to numb the pain. And it was in 2003 that I cried out to God in desperation and I asked him to do something in my life. And little did I know that he sent he spoke to a prophet who was a housewife at her sink and took her to her knees and showed her my face and told her, go to Main Street and you will find her and you're going to release all of that junk inside of her. It was that night that the Lord broke me open because sometimes you have to be broken open and broken down for him to restore and rebuild you. And as the Lord broke me open and I wept in a stranger's lap who prophesied everything about my life that I had never known. She said, now that you've emptied yourself of all of that junk, we're going to pray for the Holy Ghost to fill you so as much that the enemy will regret the day that he ever messed with you. Right? So the power of the Holy Ghost is not just to speak in tongues and just uh, do the things that we Pentecostals or whatever you want to call us do. It is literally the keeping guard of your life. It is the guardrails. It is the presence that goes before you and hymns you in behind you. The blood of Jesus saved me. But I can tell you 19 years later, it has been the Holy Ghost that has kept me. It has been the Holy Ghost that has gave me a revival of sanity when the enemy came in to drive me crazy. It has been the Holy Ghost that when I saw a woman lay dead in my service, that I rose up with the faith of God and said, you will live and not die. Come alive in the name of Jesus. It is the Holy Ghost that releases the power of God to uproot cancer that has grabbed a hold of bodies. It is the power of God, the Holy Ghost that resides. You see that Ark of Testament was the carrier of the presence. And now it's you. The walking Testament, the walking tabernacle of witness to all people testifying they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony and they did not love their life unto death, we leave that part out being a witness for him means it's the same root word as martyr if you look up the word martyr it means witness which means I lay my pride down. Which means I submit under the mighty hand of God that he might lift me up in due season. It means I'm willing to die so that Christ could live within me. I'm willing to be a dried up stick and produce a first fruit as Jesus died and was buried and resurrected and was the first fruit of many brethren who had died. I'm willing to lay it all down and be a martyr for the cause of Christ and be his witness. 
If you're in this room and you would say, I need to recommit my life because as the word has just gone forth and it's not my word, I wouldn't have preached this word. I would have preached something different. I would have preached something much more fiery. But the Lord said, you go release the Levitical anointing in that house. Not that they don't already operate as the priestly garment and priesthood of my church. Here's what's funny. My husband and Caleb didn't even know what I was preaching. We take the exit and my husband said, I mean, I have to tell you what I saw when you were getting ready in the hotel room. He said, I saw fire in the room and I saw you in a priestly garment. He said, I saw you wearing an ephod, and that is so strange because that's not something I would typically say to you. But I saw you releasing a priest anointing in the room. And I just started laughing. Because I just need a confirmation of God, why do you have me going in releasing this? So if you believe God, you'll be established. If you believe his prophets, you'll prosper. And it's the Lord who is watching over his word to perform it. But as the word of the Lord has gone forth tonight, and the Levites being willing to carry the presence well, the Levites willing to do the work in the service and assist the man and the woman of God, the priesthood of God, willing to be a doorkeeper, willing to open the gates and willing to close the gates, willing to help transport and transplant whenever God says to move, willing to do the work that he's called us to do, willing to step in the water when he called us to step. And you would say, I need a fresh commitment in my own personal life because I do not want to try to handle holy things and be unholy. I don't want to try to put my hands to holy things and die trying to carry it. you're trying to scare me you better believe it the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom not fear me but there is still a God who is in heaven who desires our honor and desires the fear of the Lord to come alive in his house again not that he's not a loving father you better believe he is he's forgiving we are still under the mercy seat of God thank you Lord that you have not left your mercy seat he's not on his judgment seat yet If you come forth tonight, it's just another testimony to put in. He gave me another chance. If that's you and you would say, I need a fresh commitment because I want to holy hands and a clean heart to carry the holy things of God. If that's you, would you flood this altar right now? Come on, we're not raising hands. We're not closing eyes. We're in a day and an hour where the Lord says, if you will not be ashamed of me, I will not be ashamed of you. I want holy hands. I want clean heart. I want purity of mind in this day. I want to put my hands to the holiness of God. I want him to trust me to carry what it is that he's called us to carry in this hour. Come on, move, move, move. If you need a fresh touch, a fresh commitment, a fresh holiness from heaven. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, you can do so by clicking right here. And also, here is another message that will bless you. Just click right here. Thank you, and we pray that we will see you again here at Tag Church. God bless you.